Yo, yo, YouTube land, what's going on? Hey, you, some of you have been following me along the last two, three weeks. I've been videotaping a little bit about my contest prep. I hired a nutrition coach for the second time in my career. I've competed about 30 times, 24 as a pro. Three years ago, I hired Cliff Wilson. I tried to hire him this time, but he was competing and he was so busy, he couldn't get back to me. So I hired uh, his sidekick, John Gorman. Uh, a first form top 10 trainer uh, for uh, Andy Frisella's first form company. So we we got our peak week practice done last week and we got me and John and we got feedback from the videos and uh, the pictures about how my body reacts to the carb macro cycle that we have two days of low, around 125 grams of carbs for the day. I up my protein to about 240 to 250 per day, which means basically six meals of six meals of 40 grams per meal. So that was a little bit higher than what I'd been eating. John reminded me that old older guys, 40 to 50 to 60, we require more protein. Our body just doesn't supply the anabolic hormones as well. Uh, so I upped that, and we deduced last week trial peak week that my body looks the driest and the hardest and the most ripped uh, two days after the carb reload. And he reloaded me, we did it two practices last week. We reloaded once at 340 grams of carbs for the day. And then we just monitor how my body looks that day, the next day and the day after at, at the low carb uh, rate of 125 per day. I hope that makes sense. So I'm competing this Saturday, but I, on this video, I'm on a low carb day. Now in that 125 grams of carbs, you do get to throw in about 30 grams of fast release carbs and whey protein before your work, weight workout, 20 grams of dextrose sugar in the middle of the workout, and about 30 grams of fast, any kind of carbs you want, along with 30 grams of powdered protein after. So that, that gives you a little bit of juice to get through the workout. But the main thing I wanted to hit is, my, I'm 53, my body's beat up. Most people give up on the last two, three weeks or four weeks up into a contest of improving their physique. I, I didn't do that. I actually got more in tune with my physique and the exercise and how I recover and the pump and the lack of symmetry and the damage in my body because I'm putting everything under a microscope. I hired two chiropractors, one chiropractor, one energy guy, and I tried three or four techniques I'd never heard of before this last month. One's auricular therapy, it's like needless acupuncture. Another one is torque program. Another one is smart, no. Bio, I, anyway, he's an energy guy, like Tai Chi and some nerve flossing. This nerve got damaged three years ago. I had massive atrophy in my shoulder. You can probably see it in my bicep. My money maker bicep atrophied, and that was not good. So the flossing of the ner nerve that came out of C6 through here, I, I, I was taught how to floss and how to loosen things up. See, we as bodybuilders tend to over, ah, do everything aggressively. But Tai Chi, getting your energy back, improving damaged nerves, be a, a chronic beat up right shoulder is probably more going towards therapies that is easy going. Foam roller, flossing the nerve, it's amazing how fast the body will regenerate new, healthy, even disease-free cells when you do what's right. I, I did a little bit of flossing and some Tai Chi type stuff. To This nerve was obviously getting hit uh, underneath the trap. It was burning somewhere in the C cervical six area. It's chiropractors, I felt it, but they pinpointed it. So the energy techniques along with the spine uh, manipulation, I'm excited, I guess is what I'm trying to say. These last two weeks, I brought up my weak points, my chronic beat up shoulder of 30 years is improved, and I believe I'm gonna bring the best package I've ever brought at the age of 53. It didn't surprise me, because I never give up on improving damaged tissue. And if you're lifting weights and you're just blowing through the heavy weights in your 20s and 30s, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening in your 30s and 40s. You gotta become more in tune with your body and how to recover, rest, when you're not, well, I'm not assuming what you're doing, but I did not want to take, because I'm a cancer survivor, one kidney removed at the age of two, polycystic kidney, I didn't want to take anabolic hormones. That was my stick. I didn't want to challenge my health. I wanted to be as 
Roma, the founder of youth with no antibiotic hormones. Until 20 weeks ago, if you call it, it's not really an antibiotic hormone, but it's a homeopathic delivered, which is microdose, 30 times dilution, human growth hormone. And uh, some of her may shake shell, but it's been a game changer for me. That's a big part of the reason why I've been able to repair my damaged beat up tissue. So this is my last set of the day. It's been a long day at the transformation station here where I do 12 week transformations with my clients. I'm, I'm gonna do my dumbbell chest pullover. I'll try to say a few things that might help you focus on your chest better with the dumbbell pullover. But first I'm gonna do one of my favorite bicep moves because my biceps are both improving um, since I've flossed the nerve over here. The nerve's not getting hit on and my right beat up shoulder is getting better with the energy techniques that the chiropractors have been doing for me. Try to think of the other technique, bioenergetic, bio, best, bioenergetic something therapy. It has to do with energy. It's like, uh, oh, some, uh, they freaking burnt, it's not sage, but they burnt something and uh, put it on my skin, and the Eastern people have been doing it for years. Here it is right here. Look at this. This dude burnt me this morning. It's called Moxa Moxy Rolls. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it seems a little bit far out there, but man, I'll tell you what, my body is healing fast. All right, I'm gonna give it to you right here because it's really quite incredible. Moxabustion, M-O-X-A-B-U-S-T-I-O-N, a moxabustion. It's along the lines of how someone would smudge with sage smoke like the Indians, but this uh, smudges your body. Okay, so here we go, I wanna show you these last two exercises. All right, so this is uh, scoop the water out of a pail, got my occlusion restricted blood flow here. One of my favorite biceps move. Ooh. It's my last one of the day, so don't make fun of me. So the key with this, and a lot of biceps move is uh, soup, bowl of soup, supination. You turn the pinkies higher than the thumb. The lower, the forms turn like that on any bicep move. It's a straight bar, a curl bar, but you can really do it on this movement here. Take that dumbbell up to the ceiling. The elbows come closer together, as you can see, they come out. See how I'm bending the wrist and the hands fall, uh, the palm stays parallel to the ceiling. Ooh. I keep it in the bottom half range of motion to finish it off. Okay, here we go, get those elbows out closer together on the last one. Uh, 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 woo. Oh. If you had a bar, I'd do some stretching on that bicep. Do some isometric squeezing. Three, two, one. Isometric squeezing and posing can really make a muscle sore, especially if you're not used to it. It's hard to do. But here's a real simple way to do it right here. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. So I squeeze, squeeze the water out of a sponge. You can look in the mirror and do a front double bicep. Rear double bicep. Don't make fun of me, posing's hard. All right, dumbbell pullover, last exercise. Dumbbell pullover for chest. Ooh. So my right beat up shoulder hasn't allowed me to do dumbbell pullovers for a long time, but it's a lot better now after the last month of the things I just talked about. So I get the head out of the way to the side. Ooh. Ooh. 
So his elbows split apart. And then to drive those elbows to, to the middle as you drive that double, pretty much straight up towards the ceiling. Ooh. If the, you want to get a little deeper range of motion, scoot off the bench so the, the dumbbell doesn't hit the bench. Elbows apart. Oh. Oh, nice. Elbows apart. Arch that lower back out. Arch that lower back out. Tilt that chest open and up. Oh. Oh. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There. Uh, three pulses, three, two, oof, oof. I call that playing with it, ah, you could have got, uh, uh, ah, fuck, ah, oh shit, Woo. finishing technique, five, four, three, oh, oh shit, So to finish the technique, elbows out, and then elbows together, squeeze the pecs right here in the middle head. It hits the pec minor. Elbows out, elbows together. And you squeeze them straight up through the ceiling. Elbows out, elbows together. That's where you're gonna really feel it, right in that inner head. The deep head, it's called the pec minor. It's underneath the pec major. Just a little bit of posing and squeezing. The side chest is a pretty tough one. It's a master. Want to say hi? Arnold could set a beer, can of beer right up here. today monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday five days out let me know what you think comment below let's chat it out you do have the power to change to make the rest of your life the best of your life Woo! oh yeah what do you guys think huh